In 2004, Michael Booth, an employee at a Nissan factory in Tennessee, injured his neck. Despite the restrictions that were placed on him to prevent further injury, Booth was able to continue performing his job. In 2015, he applied for a new position at the factory. Not one that would have paid more, but one that workers there are often awarded after they've spent a long time with the company. His application was immediately denied because the company believed this position would have violated the work restrictions from his disability. Soon after his application was denied, Booth was informed that the company was restructuring the assembly line and they would be adding two new tasks to his job that he would be unable to perform. They suggested he see a physician to be reevaluated so that his restrictions could be removed. Booth filed a lawsuit, arguing that Nissan had discriminated against him due to his disability. Booth lost this suit for a few reasons. The first was because he didn't file the suit within 300 days of the discrimination, which was a requirement to have his case heard. The other reason is because Booth did go to the physician, like Nissan recommended, which resulted in a change to his restrictions and let him continue working at the assembly line. Had the company not convinced him to get his work restrictions changed, he probably would have been fired and likely could have won the lawsuit. Thousands of employment discrimination charges are filed with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission every year, and many result in litigation like Michael Booth's case. I don't disagree with the court's ruling in this case, but I do think that Booth's loss reflects a flaw in the laws themselves. Despite the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990, or the ADA for short, many disabled people still face workplace discrimination. Disabled people are half as likely to have a job compared to people without a disability. From 2018 to 2019, the unemployment rate among disabled people actually increased. Some argue that this is due to a looser enforcement of the ADA than we've seen in the past, combined with new hiring methods, like those that use artificial intelligence, that discriminate against disabled people without being openly discriminatory. Additionally, the ADA has some shortcomings. It doesn't technically guarantee accommodations to disabled people. Instead, it compels businesses to provide reasonable accommodations that do not impose an undue hardship on the firm. Vague language that can be interpreted however you please. According to the legal scholar Richard Epstein, enforcement costs money and successful enforcement under the guise of reasonable accommodation necessarily impedes the operation and efficiency of firms. Essentially, he argues that any accommodation for a disabled worker is an undue hardship they would operate more efficiently if they just hired somebody who isn't disabled, and therefore it's always unfair to ask firms to hire disabled people. Finally, disabled people are frequently employed in sheltered workshops, which are businesses that are allowed to pay their disabled employees sub-minimum wages to perform basic tasks, like opening boxes and sorting items. Considering this is only legal when the workers are disabled, this practice seems rather exploitative. Anyone could perform these tasks, but if you were to hire a non-disabled person to do it, you'd still have to pay them minimum wage. Proponents argue that this can be a stepping stone for a real career, but the jobs in sheltered workshops are rarely the type of experience that other employers are looking for. It's disappointing that the ADA fails to provide protections to disabled people in a lot of cases, but el what else can we do about it? It would be unfair to make businesses build new facilities just to employ workers who won't complete the job as efficiently. You're right, further legislation wouldn't be very effective to prevent discrimination. But we can't lose sight of how important it is to make sure workers can make a living regardless of circumstances beyond their control. What if every firm were to refuse to accommodate a disabled worker? The holes in the ADA effectively allow businesses to exclude disabled people from the economy entirely. But aren't there industries that are not suitable for disabled workers? It seems like being able to hire only able-bodied employees would be a necessity for physically demanding careers. Okay, but disabled people probably won't be seeking out those jobs anyways. They aren't looking for work they can't do, nor are they looking for accommodation that will cost businesses millions. They're looking to earn a fair wage, just like anyone else. It's not their fault that conditions beyond their control make them less employable. Even if it makes sense to discriminate against them through an economic lens, we can't derive morality directly from the economic growth and act causes. I'm willing to agree with that, but I just don't see how it's fair to pay some people proportionally more for work that's less valuable. If a disabled person can't work as effectively as someone who isn't disabled, shouldn't we expect them to make less? It only seems appropriate that people are paid according to the work they do.
You're exactly right about that last part, but what you aren't recognizing is that no one is paid according to the work they do. The amount that workers are paid is essentially arbitrary, as long as it's some amount less than the true value of the work they're doing so their boss can turn a profit. The problem here isn't that disabled people are less valuable to society. It's that our society assigns value to people based on their utility within our economic system. I don't think that's a fair evaluation. If workers aren't happy with the amount they're paid, they're free to find a new employer. That's what's so good about our economic system, the freedom to choose. Does a disabled person really have the freedom to choose their employer? If no one's willing to hire them for a fair wage, when they end up taking a job, it's simply because they have to take some job. The freedom to choose a job under a system that coerces people into labor is not freedom at all. And it's not just disabled people that this happens to. Everyone is subject to the same coercion. If you don't work somewhere, you're not going to be able to stay alive. If every firm operates under that assumption, no one is going to pay you the full value of your labor. You can either work and earn less than you're worth, or you can starve. There's no freedom there. We've arrived at a critical conclusion here. The problems with existing disability rights legislation aren't problems with the legislation at all. These laws attempt to right wrongs that are an integral part of our economic system. Without assigning workers value based on their potential to do labor, businesses can't be certain they'll generate revenue. Because firms operate in the interests of profit, not of public well-being, they've formed a coalition against disabled people, one that helps them maximize their wealth. The problem of disability-based discrimination cannot end until the oppression of disabled people is no longer incentivized.